before we move on, I everyone know you know you we've mentioned that uh, that but that Bill was very tight with Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to hear from Joe Burrow's mouth himself? Yeah, about what Bill Bush sound? means to him. I, I got a surprise for you. Is Bill. Joe coming on live? He's probably, no, no, probably a little be, tired right that'd now. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Uh, you may have heard this clip before. This is from twenty. This is from January thirty first, twenty twenty. Joe Burrow was with Dan Patrick, the Dan Patrick Show, and he was asked about going to LSU, how that happened. Here is a little bit of that from Dan Patrick and Joe Burrow back in twenty twenty. Oops, hang on, getting there. Did LSU find you, or did you find LSU? No, it was even me. Um, coach Bill Bush was at was at Ohio State with me for a year, and he became a state coach at LSU. He you know, table for me with Coach O. He's like, if we get this guy, we're going to win the national championship. He said that um, two Mays ago, and on the table, and then started to watch him film with me. Fell in love with me, and I went on a visit, and I fell in love with them. Okay, wait. So they said if we bring in Joe, the national title. Yeah. Did, did you know that he said that to Coach O? I did, yeah. That's a little bit of pressure there, Joe. Not, I mean, maybe a little, but, you know, that's what I wanted to do. So that's when he said that to me, I got fired up. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Remember that conversation, Bill? I do remember the conversation. <laughs> Sometimes uh, <laughs> during Joe's first year, we'd have a practice or two, and maybe it didn't go so well. We are pretty decent on defense too and coach joe would come by me like joe didn't throw it very good today <laughs> so when he made the promise uh but uh, obviously he came through what yeah. i knew with yeah. joe was from being with him and being such good friends with his dad so long and then having a chance to coach one of his brothers here and friends with his other brother and was that how tough he was and how competitive he was and how fast he could process and so i knew with uh, the, the people we had around him uh the success would, would have a great chance to come our way it's probably kind of a bold state it's kind of one of those things to have work out pretty well and make it's kind of a Joe. Uh, but I was just really, really humble, really lucky to just be a part of it. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It's a great family. And uh, he's, a, he's a pretty cool guy when you see him out there on, well, the, on the field. He's about to get a lot cooler because this offseason he's going to sign a contract for a half billion dollars. That's I mean, the, I, 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 yeah. seriously. Well, uh, he's he's going to resign. Yeah, he'll That's resign. That's Mahomes type money over there. It's going to be a half worth, billion. It. It's going to be a half billion. <laughs> the the also what I feel so great about the story and for the Bengals is that Joe's from Ohio, so he grew up wanting to play for the Bengals. So he wants to stay right there. He doesn't have another place in mind. That's where he wants to be. That's that's where uh, his life is. And so that's a pretty cool situation uh, for the city of Cincinnati and for the Bengals to be able to do and and. Um, just hopefully Joe through his connections now can get them. They have, to have a bubble now. They don't have an indoor yet. And so like that's so I'm sure really? that might, might be one of Joe's negotiations is to make sure yeah. he gets an, an indoor facility. They have a bubble. They just got that uh, just last year. Well, Rucker, when you make a Super Bowl, you know, you can start making some demands here. Rutgers has had. a bubble. <laughs> they do. Um, I've been in the bubble. Burrow, it, it's, I mean, I don't think about this stuff like you guys do because I don't watch the NFL as much as you guys. Well, Shame. Bill doesn't write, watch a lot. He can't watch watch a lot of it but i mean think about burrow burrow allen mahomes this is going to be going on in the afc for the next decade plus oh, Trevor and trevor lawrence they're just oh, herbert maybe yeah. also oh if, yeah you know i'm not going to put two of there yet because you got to stay healthy but those five for sure somehow it all got back to the dolphins it, had, you know, it, it always it does went, bill it just circled its way all the way I back said, to the dolphins i said maybe he just I dropped said, it in I'd there say maybe about anybody yeah there's five for sure yes. <laughs> maybe two you know if he stays healthy but no yeah so trevor lawrence and justin herbert there's there's five guys that will just be a rotation you the would AFC. say the top three though mahomes allen and now have you changed Pearl. your order yet because if you recall you maybe you heard this bill last last week we were going through the our top five quarterbacks in the league and i had burrow second allen third and he had Allen second, Burrow third. I still think Burrow's the second best quarterback. Obviously, Sybil made a critical error. Of course. That's, that's what happens. happens. It's not an error. It's that a subjective happens. analysis. It's, 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 he made an error. It's okay. It's that's not an right. error. It's an opinion. <laughs> I like Allen's arm strength. I like his ability he is to run. A, he he's, is he's a, an alien. He, he is a unbelievable quarterback. So and who, strength and his body, yeah. what he can do and how he can run and things he does. He's he's an incredible player. Burrow, Burrow's obviously excellent. And yesterday he was good. I mean, they did run the ball well. Mixon ran for Mixon ran for 105 himself. Uh, Burrow was 23 for 36 for 242. Led scoring drives. You guys watched it on five of the Bengals' first seven possessions. Bam. Yeah, it was an Control. impressive show. I mean, it, in no turnovers for Joe Burrow, just 
right. never really panicked at all. Always was in there. The Bengals are playing the us against the world card. Like, are they be, are they disrespected? Yes. Yeah, they are. Do you think so? Well, think think about this. The, this. the Bengals made the Super Bowl last year. They've beaten the Chiefs three times this calendar in twenty twenty two. They beat them three times. Playoffs. Um, at the end of the regular season, 2022, uh, 2021, and then, and then obviously in the regular season this year. And still everyone says it's Bills, Chiefs in the AFC. And well, they forget they, about the Bengals. Well, of course know, they're disrespected. You know what the NFL did? <clears throat> they were selling tickets. They were selling tickets for the neutral site game, Bills, Chiefs, just in advance. Which was which was awesome for, I, again, that's something that I'm sure is very motivational to them. Oh, it was but, really motivational. That's also something you have to do. You can't just all of a sudden, like today, be like, somebody better print some tickets up. <laughs> Someone get to Kinko's ASAP. We got ourselves a ball game. What are we? Is, is the we turf? Got is, we got to move the rodeo. The rodeo's got to move. We got to we got to get the monster trucks out of here. Are you kidding me? So I think that's probably they had to have some form of a plan. Yeah. Simple, you know. Well, I was so, just saying yeah. it was motivational though. Joe, your friend Joe Burrow talked about it. Uh, he said, "Get those refunds going." Don't yeah, me. who's who's the who's their D lineman reader? D DJ reader. DJ nice yeah. job. Jake yeah. knows these rosters. Yeah. DJ reader talked. Yeah, all those guys were talking about it. It was in the front to them. Absolutely. Yeah, it would be in the front. It would be something that you would use. Yeah. And that team does handle that well. I, I listened to Zach this morning, and he talked about how he discussed with him that the best winning percentage in the NFL in the playoffs is is at the Bills is that they're at home yeah like they're like 14 and one or something and yes he addressed it with the team because he knew what it would do to him it wouldn't be like oh god what do we do it was more like all right can't wait to get out there and that's then that, that is that kind that's of amazing. that, that uh, and I think that all comes from 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 the top down uh coach Taylor does a great job of that and just having a quarterback that is always the only way you have culture on your team is that when your best player is the hardest worker that's when you have culture. Was when you're, Chase when you're, a hard worker? What's that? Hard worker. Uh, God, we go to one on one. So you were at, I must establish yeah, who, Cal- who Bill Bush is. You were at LSU with Jamar Chase. Right, with, with Jamar. And then obviously uh, Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson was there. And, and Terrence Marshall was there too, who was a second round pick. And <laughs> and so so that was the three guys <laughs> we, were going, we were going against. But they would go uh, unlimited reps if they walked out there in one on ones, and it, it was only good on good. And if it wasn't, they would they'd walk away. They'd make sure everything was. I want Stingley on me. I want this on me. I want the starters on me. And so that was impressive. And they would practice that way. In general, you know, during that time, I I just don't love wide receivers. Receivers. I'm a I'm a defensive back coach. We're always kind of like ah, they just, just kind of go back and forth. I say you don't like them, just go back and forth a lot. Oh yeah. Those guys, like after every game, almost every practice, I would tell them how much I loved them and appreciate them. They would practice so mm. hard. They would try to embarrass you on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, oh, and that's why they're that's why they're doing what they do now. Besides their ridiculous talent, the way they worked is just uh, was was remarkable. So, like I said, when you have that's when you have culture, and when when you have that, I mean, I've seen in practice where it's always stay away from the quarterback and. And I've seen I've seen Joe several times in practice get hit when he shouldn't have, and it's just a full on brawl with him and and one of the other players. And they're just throwing haymakers at each other. Are they throwing hands? And, and they're throwing hands. They're throwing hands. They're throat punching people. <laughs> and they and, and they just and, and then Joe just kind of would everybody just kind of pop up and go play again. Yep. There wasn't a lot of. We had a situation in a practice one time where uh, Jacoby Stevens, who's my All SEC safety. Mm-hmm. Just lit Joe up, mm-hmm. and this was after he's in the spring. He already had shoulder surgery, so he's in a non-contact mm-hmm. jersey, and a full-on brawl breaks out. And this also goes down to the coaching staff, I believe, and how Coach Ogeron had it set up. So it breaks out, and I'm just like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna get. I, I'm just. I'm not. How am I gonna keep my <laughs> job? Safety's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for putting that together. So <laughs> he just tied that together so well. Stop. It was just like it just came out of nowhere. Like that, and I'm just like, right. so at right when we get done, I I see Steve Ensminger, who's our offensive coordinator, who's one of the greatest people in the history of, of college football. I just look at him, Steve, and I, I go, I I'm like, Steve, I know, I, I I handle. He goes, ah, don't worry about that, Billy. That stuff happens down here in the SEC. Now people are gonna get banged around a little bit. <laughs> and happens just, in the SEC, it, it, and it was it was never, and there wasn't a, it wasn't a fight in the locker room afterwards. There was nothing there, but. When you have that kind of toughness at yeah. that at that position, because at the QB, quarter, it, it's not what the quarterback. It's like I always say: real toughness is how much can you take. And you took some. You saw the shot that uh, that the Josh Allen took yesterday. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. when you have people running full speed, unabated to you and hitting you, 
that would really hurt. Yeah. Like that. So those guys are grown men back there and they should get paid what they get paid. Yeah. Half billion. Yeah. Well, he's Burrow's going to get that with Mahomes. Yeah. He's literally going to make a half billion. And Josh Allen will get that eventually is somewhat in the count. And you're right. Those guys are, it sounds like all those guys are, I don't know all those guys, but Burrow, Zach Taylor, Burrow, Zach Taylor staying in Cincy. Why I mean, wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, at this point, if if they win next week, that's back to back Super Bowls, and they they might be the favorite in that game. Maybe, maybe if the Eagles make it, maybe not. But I mean, they're back to back. But you Bowls, think so. if the Niners make it, they'd be the favorite? I, th- uh, I don't know. I'm curious where the odds. Is they don't want to be the favorite. Be a great game. Yeah, they want to keep playing that uh, us against the World Cup. Well, they were the dog last year, and lost to the Rams. Yeah, but you know now they get a second chance at it here. Well, their opponent this weekend is the Chiefs, who we mentioned beat the Jags by yeah. seven in Ed Arrowhead. Patrick Mahomes survives a scary injury moment in the first quarter, leaves the game, comes back in the second half. Was he? Was it the? I thought he got hurt in the second quarter. Was it early second quarter? Yeah. Okay, whatever. It was in the first half. And it was Henny time. It was Chad Henny. Chad Henny comes in off the bench, hadn't played in a long time. Ninety-eight yard touchdown drive. Hello. So when this it's pinned at the two yard right. line and goes 98 yards and you say, all right, respect off the bat, respect for Chad Henney. You know, when I'm thinking like a newspaper guy and there's a headline that comes out of that deal, anything is possible. <laughs> you and 8,000 Twitter people. Here's oh, man, way to go. Very rich. Here, here's Very rich. That oh, there? God. Here's yeah. Just type it in on Twitter. You'll see yeah. a million things of that. And also. This needs to be addressed early in this in, in this in this uh, in this program. Is what? that it's hard to try? I, I, I don't trust you. One is someone who wears a bow tie. I, I don't trust them. And then people that laugh at their own jokes. <laughs> that is the next thing. And Sipple is like when he says something, he he leads the howl. Yep. He's imagine just I've just never yeah, you're supposed to I've, laugh now. I've never been to a great comedian, and all of a sudden it's like. What'd you think about him? It's like I could hardly hear the end of his joke because he was laughing so hard <laughs> at what he was gonna say. And so that's uh, so I'm, this is concerning to me, simple. Someone that laughs at their own stuff that much. Anything is possible. <laughs> anything is oh, possible. Again, type that type in on Twitter in. and see what you find because it's not exactly new <laughs> or original. Okay. It's out there. So interest, yeah, that's an interesting situation. I think the Jacksonville story is almost e- equally as interesting. Jacksonville was three and eight this year. At one point, and then they rolled off seven straight wins. Could they be the team that dominates that division going forward, like the Colts once yeah. did? The South is bad right now. Right, I mean, the Titans lost so many games to end the season. They got questions: Is Tannehill the guy going forward? You had, you got Derrick Henry still. The defense is still pretty good. The, the Texans are, of course, in rebuild mode, and the Colts are in rebuild mode. So at this point, it looks like with Trevor Lawrence, you got your guy there. You have yeah. Lawrence and Doug Peterson, like you have Zach Taylor and Joe. Burrow. Good combo. And we felt when we played as good as Trevor Lawrence was, we felt when we played Clemson in the national championship game and I was at LSU uh-huh. that the best player on the field was ETN. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was ETN. Key, because if you watched him against the Ohio State in the semifinals, he was a, he was a dominant player, a uh, really, really dominant player. What? Why? Uh, uh, j- uh, he ran so angry. Yeah. He ran angry. And we have to tackle angry people. That's not near as much fun. And uh, he, obviously he never missed a cut and did some things. But to go back on the on the Chiefs, this is where brilliant shows up in the Andy Reid is that so now all of a sudden there's two things that happen. One, uh Henny thing can happen comes in, which is awesome for you. <laughs> yeah. And was. so Henny comes in like that. But what happens? So now the play caller has to have what does this quarterback or backup quarterback do best? It can't just be you know, oh yeah, we just keep calling the same exact plays because that's the, it's, they're different. They're going to have different things. What does he do the best? And then he has to have in his mind for what can we do with someone that's on a half of leg when when Mahomes comes yeah. back in. Yeah. So the play caller there yeah. and Andy Reid, he did a brilliant job of of putting him in great situations with what what had to happen. Yeah. And they executed it, but they he also knew. If this happened, here's what he does best. Here's what he can get yeah. done. And then all of a sudden trying to call a game with an injured quarterback. In the uh, playoffs, in yeah. with all that pressure. Yeah, well, That's think amazing. about the conversation, too. I mean, a lot of fans, they will go, oh, here we go. Here's some adversity. Can you win without Patrick Mahomes? And they go have a 98-yard drive saying, what was that? What were you saying? We're just fine. Conference. That's, That's big. And meanwhile, on the sideline, your half-billion-dollar quarterback is begging to come in. I mean, like. Like Joe Burrow, like a Joe Burrow type toughness, yep. saying, "I oh, get me in the game." I mean, he's pleading to get in the game. That that injury, when, once you hear that, any time in coaching, 
when you hear from the press box or that, what's he got? High ankle. You're like, oh, 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 that's not good. That's that's a rough, rough injury. And it won't, if it's a true high ankle, it, it won't change a lot between now and God. next and, and next. What do you week. do then? It's not, a, it'll, it'll still be very limited. That is a long-term injury. That takes, it's probably eight weeks before you feel like you're really back to yourself and could be more. So it's a, it's a really, really tough injury for him. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm just curious with that being said with, with Mahomes not going to be a hundred percent, he's going to play, but he's not gonna be a hundred percent. I mean, I, I get they're the home team, but I, I would, I would favor the Bengals. Well, when's the last time the Chiefs beat the Bengals? It's been a long, it, they've lost three straight times. I think it's more than that, but well, well, our research Burles department beat them three straight times. Yeah, well, sure. We got to We'll put our research department on that. The Bengals, that that series has been heavily tilted toward the Bengals. I don't, it's remarkable almost. I'm sort of surprised they're an underdog. Well, it's, it's, it's are you ready for all this? This has been outstanding. Are you ready for it? <laughs> and and yeah. again, just the way you tied some things together, Simple, was really outstanding. That's why I am the star of this show. <laughs> and that's uh, why I will remain the star of the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> NFC, uh, we're not going to talk about the Eagles 38 7. Yeah, what do we need to, no, what do you need to say? I, well, I just think in general, Jalen, you know, Jalen Hurts, the question was, is he healthy? Uh -huh. He looked pretty damn healthy to me. Uh, I didn't see any injuries at all. He, he ran the ball well. He was good with his decision making. And that game was over early. I mean, it was 14 zip off the bat. Giants had a touchdown in the you know late in the game to make it seven, but it was 28 0 at halftime. And a lot of questions about is Jalen Hurts ready for this moment? He looked pretty ready to me on Saturday night. I he's one of the more remarkable quarterbacks right now in the NFL, just because labeled has, you know, can't throw it. Not good enough to be able to to, to hang in there with uh, in in the pockets. He, he had a lot of knocks on him, and how he's led his team. I think that what they had, they were fourteen and three, and two of the losses were without him. Correct? I think, yeah. And so yep, he, he lost right. one game correct. in the regular season, and I I think they're probably as as good a play callers for him right now. That you saw him uh, carry the ball in design quarterback runs. He has the ability to keep plays alive and then also has, because they can run the ball and he can run it. They have a lot of play action and he gets himself out of trouble. Uh, I have this, the utmost respect for him. We had to play against him, uh, when I was at LSU in the semifinals and, uh, he just did a lot of things. I mean, he was a Heisman finalist and, uh, he was always talk about an underdog. There's a guy that's been the underdog every time, you know, he played unbelievable, and then gets pulled out of the yeah. national championship game. Yeah. And Tua, Tua, come, Tua, Tua comes in. Hit. They end up winning the Guns game. Touchdown like pass or two. And then right? he comes back and he wins the SEC championship for him. But then Tua comes back into the game at the next game in the, in the national championship game. And so and he's so he's always boy, he's he's taken a few knocks and just keeps going. So he's one of those stories, man. You pull for him. There's no doubt about yeah. that. And I know playing the having a coach against him. Every snap, you were nervous because what he could do, just how tough he was, and then his strength is ridiculous. So, right? uh, yeah, especially lower body. I mean, he's got he's got all kinds of you know powerlifting records and all these is things. That right? and, yeah, he's really, 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 really special young man and a really, a really good quarterback. And and like I said, that game wasn't even it was, worth watching. It was terrible. Yeah. Did you but, did you think Brock Purdy has some powerlifting records? No. I don't, but you know, he, it's you, pretty you don't impressive. know. Maybe he does. He also, this is interesting because you're wearing your wife's glasses. Does Trixie know that you're wearing? I, nobody does. No, I just want to make these sure. are Gert Wyman's glasses, but they. I mean, I think I can pull it off. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, yeah, the guy who's going to who's going to no matter what happens with him is going to make a a just like I'd say bales of money delivered to your house will be pretty for how he can mm. how he can. Uh, how he can market himself as Mr. Irrelevant one year after being it's Mr. Irrelevant. It's incredible. If he ends up going to the quarter to be to the Super Bowl as the quarterback and he was the last pick in the draft, because yeah. usually Mr. Irrelevant a couple of oh, times is yeah. like, he's made a team. Yeah. Oh, he made a team, but the, this is a story. No, you're right. And, and, and it wasn't like he was Mr. Oh. Irrelevant seven years ago. Right. It was Mr. A, Irrelevant uh, kind of changes the whole, the whole dynamic. Thing. So he'll have a chance like that. There'll be all kinds yeah. of things like that. Get the Mr. Irrelevant sandwich at Subway see, or something. You see what Saban, what Nick Saban told? Purdy on the recruiting trip. What do you say? Purdy shared this with the media. Okay, and this is it, it illustrates that even the greatest coach of all time can miss. He told Purdy, "You're below average in height." Oh, he told the media. You're, he told Purdy told the media that Saban told him this on his recruiting trip. You're below average in height. Your arm strength is whatever, and your accuracy is average. 
No, no scholarship. I would like to have been there for that. I'd like to see how accurate that is. That's what Purdy said. I, it was, it, but is that hundred percent Purdy's quote? Like, that? Yeah. like, have you heard it? Have you heard him say it? Or was, was it one of these things that was just that was just Ooh, shot out there somewhere? Hearsay over so here. They're hearsay somewhere because that's I have a hard time believing that one. He visit. He said, uh, "This is an athletic article." Purdy assessed all of his options before c- committing to Iowa State, and that included visiting Alabama. This is in a discussion with the Athletic. Purdy shared what Nick Saban had to say of his skill set. Could be, might be true. Yeah, might, might be true. It's pretty wild that it, it, there, it, there's a real scenario that the two best offensive players that were rookies this year were from Iowa State: Brock Purdy at quarterback and Brees Hall, who got hurt for the Jets, but he was tearing it up with the Jets. I mean, right. Iowa State might have had the two best rookie offensive players Jeez. this year in, in the NFL. Hello, yeah, yeah hello, that is amazing. Pat Campbell, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is amazing, yeah, awesome. but he didn't do much with them. That, well, we, I'm just a couple saying. years ago they were good, but yeah, last year dis- disappointed. You're didn't, right. Two didn't years do much with them. What was it? What was the final record? Was it seven and five? Well, that was. I'm talking about the year before that though. They were pretty good. They disappointed One, though. Their final year. You're correct right. though. You, they did. Yeah, I mean, You're people right. were putting them in the like a college football playoff contender. And you know what? Those people weren't probably wrong when you look at what Purdy and Brees Hall Right, those guys are studs. Yeah. And Brees Hall gets hurt, but he was tearing it up for the Jets before he got hurt. Difference maker. Got to get to a break. Yeah, we need to get to a break. When we come back, if you got any questions for Bill Bush, please call or text 402-464-5685. Where are we going next? Well, we'll take some questions. we got a caller that wants to ask Bill a question. Okay. Plus, uh, I want to ask you about the portal, the transfer portal. Awesome. That's up next on Early Break in the Ticket.